Did you know that you can find one of Cloud's best weapons in the game called the Sleek Saber in this chest early that lets you do aerial combat and has lightning and fire elemental damage? As soon as you enter the grasslands, all you have to do is just follow this path straight down here as marked by my map down to the abandoned docks. And once you reach that area, you'll see the purple chest right in front of you. Just go ahead, open it up, and you'll get one of Cloud's best weapons. I have over 100 plus hours in this game, and that's thanks to Square Enix for sending me an early access copy. So let's go over more pro tips to help you in your journey in the grasslands. Once you have whatever weapon you've picked up in the game, I have the Sleek Saber here, you want to go ahead and open up your combat settings because once you equip that new weapon, you're going to want to equip its ability here. And the ability for this one is going to be Fireball. That way, when you are engaging in battle with enemies, you can easily access it by holding down your L1. So I'm going into battle, I'm getting my ATB gauge filled up, and then I could use the skill by holding L1 and X quickly, as opposed to going in battle and then hitting a command menu, slowing down time and, and looking for it. So you can see it's a lot easier. It's also a great way to level them up as soon as possible. That way, when you are getting your skill fully leveled up, you don't have to have the same weapon on and you can switch out to a different weapon to get another skill. Just also want to note that when you look on your shortcuts, you can see that focus thrust is there, but grayed out. And that's only because I did not master that ability. So just keep that in mind to quick use your ability in all your fights to level it up. Make sure to do this with everybody's weapon. Make this a habit throughout your game when you get a new weapon to go ahead and equip it on your shortcut. That way you're able to quickly and efficiently level up everybody's skills for their weapons. Something else you need to do is not forget to go into your material and equipment setting. Click on your character. And when you go down to set materia, do not forget to add this, your weapon skills. As your weapon levels up, you'll get access to skills over here on the side. And you want to make sure that you're always equipping these skills, depending on how you want to build your character. So example, this has ATB charge up rate, so I can do more ATBs faster. I, mean, I throw that on cloud, but let's say this is maybe too much for you to manage. Well, you can also hit the triple bar auto upgrade settings over there. And you can pick if you want Barrett to be prioritized defense, then it'll always equip the things on the bottom and materia for the weapon skills that are going to be based on defense. So just keep that in mind for all your characters, attack, defense, mixed, or just customize it yourself. However, we're going to have to talk about where you get these synergy attacks. These synergy attacks can be unlocked via the Magnata shops like the one in Calm or the ones that you see in the overworld like this purple box right in front of me. So if you go up to it, you can interact with it and you'll see all the skills you can find there, including synergies and special attacks and even boosting stats that all use SP points. This brings us over to our next point, which is going to be you never can mess up when it comes to synergy stuff. So for example, so if I'm in this core over here and I select this ability called Range Blade, which Cloud and Barrett can use together. Let's say I select that and now I have no more SP. And then all of a sudden I see this one and I'm like, oh, wow. I wish I could use that ability with Aerith, but I don't have any more SP points. Well, you can go right over an old one and go ahead, select the core, hover over it and just press triangle. And that'll reset that specific core, giving me back my SP. And then I can go ahead and just get the one with Aerith the firework blade. However, let's say you just want to rework your characters completely. You could then just go ahead and press the square button after you're done with all that. And the square button will reset everything on this entire area. That way you can start from scratch and build it in the correct way you want. There's no consequences to this. So feel free to explore with all the characters, the various combinations that'll help you along your journey in the game. So you know that weapon I talked to you about earlier when you start in the grasslands is get that weapon first and then when you turn around you'll be introduced to where the chocobo ranch is based on those signs. You want to head over to that ranch and do that entire quest line because it's going to help you unlock that chocobo very fast and when you complete that chocobo quest line you're going to be able to have access to fast travel which is going to be huge in this game for you as well as opening up side quest in the game which is going to be really big for party affinity which we'll talk about later speaking of fast travel once you're done with all the chocobo questline stuff you can open up your map and actually teleport to the front door of calm over here this opens up for you and you can look up in the sky once you're in front of here and notice that there are no longer any shinra aircrafts 
in the air, which means you can actually go back into this area and head right back into the town. So make your way back through this entire tunnel the same way you came. And when you climb back up the ladder from this little tunnel, you'll be right back into the inn at Calm. And you'll notice as soon as you get out here, your map will show that you can now fast travel to right in the middle of Calm. So you can go back to this town at any time and not worry about Shinra. You'll have access to all the side quests on the boards over here, as well as going back and getting whatever you may need from town and doing some quests. So make sure to revisit Calm because I didn't realize the town was unlocked right away and that the Shinra soldiers went till after I cleared the grasslands. A quick pro tip is that you should hit that subscribe button right over here because I have a ton of videos planned for you that'll make this game a lot of fun. Now let's move on to the next one. Whenever you're roaming across the overworld and you see a chocobo that's a little baby, always, always, always follow it. This will lead you to a chocobo stop which will function as a fast travel point so you're gonna want to do that as soon as possible and look look at look at this little guy go and then once you arrive at a chocobo stop you can go ahead and pick this up with cloud so by holding triangle it'll pick it up or what you can also do is you can hop on your chocobo because you don't have to get off your chocobo when you're doing this you can hop on your chocobo and your chocobo can also do it so you don't have to do extra work you're riding on your chocobo you see a chocobo stop just like that and it's done in fact i feel like it's actually a little bit faster when you're on your chocobo versus cloud just doing it so keep that in mind and make sure to always hit these because these will help you travel across the map at all times and these will be indicated by the blue chocobo stop you'll also meet chadley at bill's chocobo ranch but there are a few tips alone here when it comes to looking at materia when you open up his materia shop you will see that you can purchase one of the materias right away one of the most important ones that you should grab here is going to be the auto cast materia this basically will allow you to cast a spell when you're not controlling that specific character you want to make sure to also add the cure materia so that way you can link it to the auto cast one that way Aerith can act as a healer and save your party when their hp starts to get low by outputting cure and as, as it levels up it'll be higher levels of Kyura, Kyuraga, etc. So it's a great way to have a healer at the start. You also will be able to find the auto ability material here, which is going to be extremely useful when you want to put it on people like Barrett and Tifa. Tifa is going to be really powerful with this and Barrett's going to be able to use his a special ability all the time, especially with this. And it functions when they're not being controlled. Another one I wanted to point out was the fire and ice material. Also a great option to get as well because it gives you two of the elementals for the price of one so you're not wasting multiple material slots and just using one slot to level these spells up all the way i'd say to grab auto cast first now in order to buy all the materia from chadley you're actually going to have to complete every single world objective inside of the grasslands which is basically all the objectives revealed when you go to the remna wave towers now luckily for you all your towers when you open up your map are marked up so you simply just have to go to the towers activate them and you'll see the objectives all over the map so you don't have to accidentally find them so you can feel free to do that because once you complete all that you can buy everything you want from chadley the points you get from the grassland will not transfer over to another region so feel free to spend all those world intel points on chadley's shop now we're going to touch back on sp points because there's other ways to get it in the game besides just leveling and then buying it from magnata books or the purple machine you find in the wild to upgrade your cores and get your synergy abilities in fact there is a special place in the game known as the Mughal emporium on your map now when you go to the Mughal emporium it's going to be obviously marked up by the Mughal you go inside there and the simple objective is to just get all these Mughlets inside of the pen and you just have to really just get around them and push them in because they just will react to whatever direction you're facing them and go in that way it's pretty simple but if you knock out or get hit three times you're dead so make sure you're being really careful once you're done with that task you'll then have access to open up the Mughal emporium shop where you will start to see a bunch of items now some important ones in the grasslands one that i wanted to highlight are going to be the art of the swordplay volume one 
and The Way of the Fist Volume 1 as well. These two items specifically are going to be really big for both Cloud and Tifa because when you buy it, it gives you even more SP points that you could spend on their cores in their folios and just increase the synergy abilities and special things that you can unlock. So make sure to go ahead and do this. Now, of course, in order to purchase this, you're going to need Moogle Metals and I'm sure you're wondering where to farm these. Which brings us to our next tip. Now, don't worry, farming Moogle Metals is really easy and there's only two two locations you really need to worry about on your map to get it that are guaranteed to always have them. The first one is going to be these that you come across, which are going to be the cache locations. When you approach them, you'll see the top left saying locate the treasure. You also will see that on your mini map or your bar above that it has a treasure icon and you'll find these boxes. Check this out. When you hit it, Look at that, guaranteed Moogle Medal. So any boxes you come across in these areas will give you a Moogle Medal. Another location that is guaranteed to have Moogle Medals are the towers that are already marked on your map. When you go to them, you have to defeat the enemies here, but once you climb up, no matter what, you will always find them. I have tested almost every single tower and I have found them. If they're not on top of the tower, there's boxes around the tower. But you'll always usually find some boxes. Here we go, two boxes here, two Moogle Medals, and just like that, I have three now and you can start purchasing things at the Moogle Emporium. When you're out in the grasslands, you will sometimes encounter a specifically red bird. And what you want to do is always follow these birds because they'll bring you over to very important areas. So I see this bird in front of me just like this. I'm going to follow. When you stop moving, the bird will automatically start circling. And there you go, uh, Expedition Intel 6 showed up a cavern life spring. And what you want to do at this point is make your way into this area and go ahead and just touch that crystal. You'll bump into things that sometimes give you the history of the world. And sometimes you'll be revealed to very powerful secret world bosses on the map. These life spring crystals can also unlock something known as Excavation Intel, which shows up on the map like this. It's like a little shovel that you can dig something with. When you go over to here, your chocobo is going to be needed to dig up some stuff here. Now, the stuff that you find is going to be really important for transmutation items because you find accessories and sometimes key items for side quests by doing this. It's really cool, but everything is actually connected in this game. Now, these items are going to be extremely important to transmute because they're accessories that are going to have more slots than the typical ones you may own, and you don't have to buy these and can make these at any time. You can open up your item transmutation menu and look at them, and they'll be indicated by a red dot saying that they're pretty much the new ones you've got. Which leads us into our next point, which is to make sure that you are always using your item transmuter at all times to constantly keep crafting new things. You can see your level up happening by the item next to the number telling you exactly how much experience you're going to get for something. Now, you can't spam the same item over and over again for experience. You can only do each item once until you level up. But it's great to stock up on necessary items like potions. You might need them when your health is low in battle. If you ever find yourself where you cannot craft anything because you level up and unlock new stuff in the transmuter that most likely means that you probably have to leave the grasslands and go to another area that is going to have different materials on the ground which goes into the next pro tip pick up every single material you find on the ground in the game at all times until the game literally tells you you are unable to pick it up because picking up these items are going to be necessary for crafting when you talk to chadley you're also going to see something called use combat simulator this is going to be very, very important for people to do when you're playing the game because there are a bunch of free things that you'll get just alone combat training where you get to play with each of the characters and as a reward, you'll be getting materia literally for free. For playing with red, you get MP up materia and you could slap that right onto Aerith to make your MP even stronger. These things will help you level up your materia and play around with it. Now, if you do objectives in the world, those gold objectives on the map, you'll start unlocking different grassland stuff over here, which will also give you different materia. So make sure you're doing quests on the map in order to get this. Now, another big tip is talking about Titan over here. Now, Titan is extremely powerful when you start to fight. And I'm sure there's somebody out there who's going to beat Titan at full might at the start of the game. But I didn't want to waste any time, so I I made sure to go around the map and find Titan Sanctuaries. They're located in different areas and it's a little mini game where you have to just press the buttons and memorize where they were in order to accomplish that. When you do all three areas, Alpha, Beta, and Gamma, you will notice the power will start to show up being lower and lower when you open Chadley Simulator. 
when you have a power lower than three you're good to go and fight titan and you'll probably be able to completely demolish titan very early on and without even leveling in fact they actually did that in one of my videos and he was my first enemy i fought in the game by doing the sanctuaries you'll notice on the titan materia that you have up to level four if you don't do any sanctuaries and just beat him at full power you only will have titan at level one so either way you have to do it one of the most important habits you need to develop in this game is using assess on everything now if you don't know what exactly that is it's a materia that you have and i think the game defaults it on cloud actually so you'll have the assess material here if not make sure to go ahead find it and grab it and throw it on cloud or whoever you want but whoever it is make sure they're controlling and what assess does it essentially gives you all the secrets about an enemy so if we were to rush up on this enemy right now there we go and we got it full bar we're gonna go to our abilities and go to assess so i'm gonna be able to just go check out this enemy and i find out that their weakness is going to be fire and i know that exploiting their elemental weakness will pressure them that yellow text line is extremely important because by pressuring an enemy you'll be able to stagger them a lot faster so this yellow line is very important now not only is it important just to know what to use on these enemies and stuff like that so like if i use fire now look at that boom they just died it's very powerful to use this stuff or if i use my fire bolt blade i use a fire attack it dies so not only is it good for that but you're gonna need to assess everything because chadley sometimes gives you missions where you have to assess different monsters in the area. Now, to check if you assess an enemy or not, you have this lovely thing called enemy intel in your menu that you can go ahead and check. If you have a little magnifier glass next to the enemy, that means you've done it. Now, if you previously played Final Fantasy VII Remake, you can go ahead into your main menu and go down to bonuses over here. At this point, it's going to check if you did the Rebirth demo to give you a Kupo Charm and Survival set. Then it's going to check your Final Fantasy VII Remake data to give you Leviathan. And if you did the DLC for Episode Intermission, you're going to get Ramu, which is going to be really interesting. So make sure to hit your check save data load up whatever save file you have and then what you're going to do is go into your main menu go down to system and then go to dlc and bonuses from here you can grab your leviathan you can grab your rumble and your kupo charm and survival set after that you can go ahead and just equip whatever summons you want by going to the materia section and adding them on to whatever character you have. Make sure to go ahead though and check out the stats and make sure the stats line up with exactly what bonuses you want on that character because it's great to min-max exactly what you need and not just throw a summon on just to throw it on. And they are a ton of fun to use. Leviathan is really good for non-elemental damage while Romu is going to be good for lightning. So if an enemy or boss is weak to lightning, make sure to have Romu out. Whenever your chocobo comes across a question mark above its head that's blue, don't ever ignore it, which you want to do is press the up button on your controller that way your chocobo can sense the direction of where it's coming from your chocobo will automatically turn and align to it you line up your camera with that arrow and then you'll see the scent drawn towards a specific location head towards that location and when you're there you should see a little glowing thing in the ground indicating that's where it is dig up the treasure by hitting the down arrow so the chocobo sticks its head in the ground you'll end up with some really awesome treasure sometimes you'll find things like rubies and sometimes you'll find gill like i literally got over a thousand gill at this location so money farming definitely is a great option by doing this whenever you come across it something that you never want to ignore when playing this game is playing with all your party members and never really ignoring them this is important because you're going to run into many situations in the game where the party is going to be completely separated in your combat settings you can actually customize the party unfortunately you're stuck with cloud always being in your party so you have to play the other two around it so for example party one barrett Aerith, party two barrett and red x and party three Aerith and tifa now you can play around with this at multiple times but just make sure as you're going throughout the world that you're switching so before you even approach an enemy group you can go ahead hit the command menu button by pressing x and then you can switch out the different parties here so if it's a flying enemy maybe we want to just have ranged people like barrett and Aerith. so then we get our our switch out before hap that happens and then you enter battle after that that's the best way to do it 
so you can tailor exactly your strategy to the types of enemies or you know just play the way you want with whoever you want i definitely got punished because i just tried to play with my waifus whenever you're doing a fiend intel mission you'll see that there are three tasks pretty much on the top left when you enter into a fight for example during this fiend intel it says prevent all enemies from using quick nap stagger an enemy and defeat all enemies within the time limit so for my first run i actually was not able to stop the enemies from using quick nap and just was able to stagger an enemy and defeat them all within the time limit but luckily you can go ahead and retry and do it again and the only task you have to focus on for this one is just stopping them from using using quick nap which I pretty much did by realizing their weakness is fire type moves or elemental attacks. This actually goes and feeds into your party level which is going to be really important for unlocking different cores inside of the folios later on so your characters can learn a bunch of different moves and abilities and synergies. And another big tip is that you should go ahead and click this video over here to get your next information. It's blocking my face but you should really click on it.